What up, playboys? We got some breaking news this morning. That is Antonio Brown is being traded to the Oakland Raiders. So we're going to look at Antonio Brown, what his outlook is going to be. We're going to talk everything 2019 fantasy football. Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, James Washington, Vance McDonald. What is the outlook of all these players now that Antonio Brown is being shipped? Well, I guess he's being flown across country because he's going from Pittsburgh to Oakland to play under John Gruden and with Derek Carr. The trade happened, actually, I don't know if it was late last night or early this morning, but the exchange is a third and a fifth round pick for Antonio Brown. The NFL makes no fucking sense to me when it comes to trading draft picks. Everyone covets them so highly, but then when you try to trade a really good player, they're only worth like a fourth round pick. And this was a funny tweet that I saw this morning. Uh, a third round pick gets you Martavis Bryant. A fifth round pick gets you AJ McCarron. But a third and a fifth gets you Antonio Brown. And that's you know that's a very very accurate description of how the NFL draft picks work. And I understand there's money involved, so you you get the picks, but you also have to pay Antonio Brown. But still, like if Martavis Bryant had had a good year coming off that trade, then he would have got his money too. AJ McCarron's obviously a wash. So whatever, that's what it is. The Steelers are getting a third and a fifth round pick. Uh, the, the fucked up part about it is this. Um, so the, the Steelers still have to pay for $21 million of dead cap space due to the Antonio Brown trade. So, I mean, the way you look at it is they can be on the hook for $21 million and be rid of the circus like they did. Or they could have been on the hook for $22 million and had Antonio Brown still in the locker room. Clearly, they didn't want him to be there. He definitely didn't want to be there. So, um you know, it was, it's a tough, tough, tough decision by the Pittsburgh Steelers in terms of what they wanted to do for their franchise, but it seemed like it kind of had to be done at this point. But let's break into the fantasy side of things. And I have my notes down here because obviously this is a quick reaction. So I apologize if I'm not looking at you in your eyes. You know what? We're not on a first fucking date. Get over it. Antonio Brown, I would say anywhere he was going outside of arguably San Francisco was going to hurt his fantasy football value. And Oakland, fits that category of teams that are going to hurt his fantasy football value. Um, but they were in desperate need of a playmaker, right? Jared Cook was like the only semblance of an athlete that this team had on the field last year, in 2018, for Derek Carr. So Antonio Brown was a desperate, desperate need. Obviously, they traded away Amari Cooper. They didn't see it as a fit somehow, even though Antonio Brown is... I guess Antonio Brown's like a rich man's version of Amari Cooper. But regardless, um, imagine they had Amari Cooper and Antonio Brown on the outside right now. That would be a, That would be quite the tandem for Derek Carr. But he goes over to Oakland. Will the volume be there? Likely. It, 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 he'll probably have around the same kind of target share that he that he saw in Pittsburgh because there are no other weapons there. Uh, but the efficiency is absolutely going to dip when I look at Derek Carr versus Ben Roethlisberger. Last year, Pittsburgh led the NFL in pass attempts per game, 43.1. Oakland was 16th at 34.8. They threw the ball on 61% of their plays compared to 67.4% for Pittsburgh. The Steelers threw the ball a league high 689 times overall, which was 133 times more than the Oakland Raiders. It's just a downgrade overall for Brown. He'll probably still flirt with wide receiver one numbers in fantasy football. Uh, probably, if I had to guess, if I had to give him projected stat line, maybe 85 catches, 85 to 90 catches, around 1,200 yards. The big dip off is going to come in, in touchdowns. I only see him, you know, that offense can only produce so many touchdowns. So I kind of see him hovering around that seven to eight touchdown mark where normally he's in the double digits. And last year he was at 15. So he's not even going to sniff that 15 touchdowns that he posted last year. Um, you know, and we've seen wide receiver ones have success in a John Gruden offense. Um, and it was actually kind of a theme of his offenses while he was coaching prior to coming to Oakland. But I don't think we've seen enough out of Derek Carr to say that, you know, he funnels his wide receiver one the ball so much and he can produce an elite fantasy wide receiver option, right? We've seen Amari Cooper there as the outright number one in the beginning of last year and prior or after Michael Crabtree left. And we just didn't see it, right? And obviously Brown is a little bit better than Amari Cooper is, but I think the point kind of remains. So I don't think Brown is, he's not definitely not like someone to absolutely fade because his ADP will adjust accordingly. I think he's going to move back to around, you know, a late second round pick. Um, I probably won't take the gamble because I would rather just have a wide receiver at that point that you trust in terms of being in a good offense and being with a good quarterback. And, you know, you might think that Derek Carr is better than the numbers suggest and what he's done over the last couple of years, but the risk is still absolutely there. I don't think we really know what Derek Carr is as a quarterback. He'll probably drop in my rankings, Antonio Brown, to around the wide receiver 9-10 area for a season long. 
the bigger impact, in my opinion, is going to be for Juju Smith-Schuster of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He will move into my top five fantasy wide receivers for 2019. We have D-Hop, Devontae Adams, Julio, Tyreek Hill, Juju gets in over Michael Thomas in the top five. If it's full PPR, I might think of getting Michael Thomas in there, but Juju... He is one guy I will absolutely not be fading um, anywhere, and he is definitely con- deserving of first-round consideration in fantasy football drafts. I will go right into this and say people are going to far overblow the theory of, you know, now Juju's the one, and defenses are just going to zone in on him, and now he has to play against cornerback ones, and blah, 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 and the tension's going to be there, and he's not going to play as well. Fam, he is literally 22 years old. He's 22. He's four years younger than your man's. 22 years old, coming off a 111 catch, 1400 yard season. 20 at 22 years old, how many wide receivers do you know at that age that were that good? I think he can handle some cornerback one coverage. So that's my first point. Is I think that whole thing is going to be far overblown when it comes to Juju. He's good enough to produce against any defense. That argument can work against a guy like Chris Hogan last year. And you know, sh- shout out to me for wanting to draft him. But Chris Hogan was 27. We should have known what he was at that point. He had no production anywhere near like Juju Smith-Schuster to back up how good he was as a receiver. He had like one half of a year where we were excited because he scored a lot of touchdowns. That was that was on us. We got to learn from that. Um, but we already have a, a big sample size for Juju Smith-Schuster as a monster NFL wide receiver. So, you know, that is, is theory number one. Is like I, I could care less about what you think about his efficiency against cornerback ones. Sure, the efficiency might dip, right? And and the targets might not be there, or maybe a few more pass breakups happen because he's going against better coverage. But what he's going to so much more make up with, I don't even know if that fucking made sense, but you get what I'm saying, is the volume. Juju finished last year with 166 targets, the fourth highest number in the entire NFL. Antonio Brown, 169, second most in the NFL. So... We're talking about a guy who had 166 targets while having a teammate that had 169. I want to pull this tweet up that I tweeted out a few weeks ago when I broke down Juju Smith-Schuster in in very deep depth in detail um, in my wide receiver rankings video earlier this offseason. So if you happen to miss that, I will link it up here as well as down below in the description. So like I said, 166 to 169, this, this would, uh, you would assume that Juju is a lock for 170 targets next year, right? An increase of four targets. So I don't think that, you know, obviously all the targets are not going to go from AB to Juju. Um, some of them will go to Vance McDonald. Some of them will go to James Washington, who will break down in a second. But I, I think it's safe to say we can all agree, even the people that hate me, even the people that hate Juju, that he's going to hit 170 targets next year, right? Over the last five seasons, there have been 10 wide receivers that have seen 170 targets in a season. All but one of them were top four fantasy wide receivers in that season. Eight of 10 were wide receiver three or better, and a lot of them were wide receiver ones. So the way I look at it is his floor, the way I look at it is it's just simple math. Like he's almost, he's a lock to hit 170 targets, and anyone who hits 170 targets 90% 90% of the time, they end up as a wide receiver four or better in fantasy football. So it's not only that the ceiling is there, because the ceiling is there. He had 1,400 yards while Antonio Brown was there, but the floor is ridiculously high. Um, what else do we got here? Oh, the other thing I think people are going to, uh, you know, dive into, and this was a concern for me as well, was, you know, Juju smith used to play a lot out of the slot. Right, and that's where all his success came from. And now that he's on the outside, he might not be as good because he's not as good against man or press coverage or whatever. And that was a concern for me because I thought he was better at finding zones and doing that kind of stuff. But I looked back and he played plenty of snaps from the slot, but he also played plenty of snaps out wide. And I kind of created this chart. And over the 30 games in which he's played in his career so far, he has had 17 games where he has actually played more snaps out wide than he has in the slot. So we have 17 in which more snaps came outside. We have 13 in which more snaps came um, in the slot for Juju in those games. And then there's three games, or 33 overall. There's three games. Oh, no, those three games are included. I'm sorry. There's three games that Juju has played in without Antonio Brown. And in those games, all three of them, Juju has played more snaps out wide than in the slot. And if you look at his numbers, those are the best games for him. Um, In the 13 games in which he has played more snaps out wide than in the slot, look at his, look all the way to the right of the column, half PPR points. 
17.4 fantasy points per game in games that he played more snaps out wide than in the slot. In those games without Antonio Brown, 17.8. So you could say he's a great slot receiver and he's going to be hurt from being on the outside, but the numbers show you historically he averages nearly 100 yards per game, seven receptions, 100 yards, 0.7 touchdowns in games where he has played more snaps out wide than in the slot. So I feel like that is debunked right there. I feel like I just hit you with the big facts that you just cannot deny. Juju is my wide receiver five, and I think he is a dark horse to finish as the number one overall fantasy wide receiver in 2019 because he is clearly the number one weapon there. And I wouldn't surprise me to see him finish, first of all, lead the league in targets, second, finished with like 185 or 190, a number that we haven't really seen hit in a few years. So I absolutely love Juju uh, Juju, <laughs> Juju Smith-Schuster. Next guy on the list, James Washington. He was a guy that got a lot of buzz coming out of college, Oklahoma State. He was a Steelers second round pick last year, miserable rookie year. And a lot of people are going to get really excited about Washington this year. I am not. I'm not even close. If he has a breakout coming in the NFL, I guarantee, I'd almost guarantee, I don't want to guarantee, this is my opinion, that it's going to be much closer to 2020 or 2021 than it is to 2019. And here's why. Here's why. I'm going to break down this big fact for you. I just, I'm, I'm going to read this off. This is all my own work, all my own big facts, if you want to put it. And, and by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new, because we're breaking down everything 2019 fantasy football, hitting you with all the big facts. Down below, scroll down, just takes two seconds to, to help your boy out. So last year, this was James Washington's stat line. 16 catches, 217 yards, one touchdown. So what I did, I wanted to see, you know, players who produced at a similar level and what they did in the following year. So I used the Rotoviz screener app, which you can, I think you could just type in on Google Rotoviz game screener or whatever. It's free to use. I will link it down below. It's an awesome, awesome tool to screen out players and whatnot. I wanted to look at every rookie wide receiver that has come into the league since 2000. So I went back to 2000 and of all the rookie wide receivers that came into the league since 2000, 465 wide receivers have finished their rookie year with 220 receiving yards or fewer. So James Washington was at 217. I want to see everyone that finished with 220 receiving yards or fewer in their rookie season. And then I wanted to see, you know, how many of them broke out in their second year and their sophomore year, right? So what I pegged as a breakout was 800 receiving yards. I think that's fair, right? Because listen, if you're going to draft a guy with hopes of him breaking out and he puts up less than 800 yards for you in your fantasy season, 800 yards is going to be useless for you, right? The fewer than 800 yards is going to be useless for your fantasy season. So I want to look at what are the chances he actually goes over 800 receiving yards. And of the 465 wide receivers that had 220 or fewer receiving yards in their first year, eight of them, eight of 465 went for 800 yards or more in the following season. That is a 1.7% hit rate. 1.7%. Ironically, actually, Antonio Brown was one of those eight, which is kind of funny. Um, but I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, he only played in 12 games, so it's unfair to use a total yardage sample for that. So I did yards per game as well. And guess what? James Washington averaged 18.1 yards per game last year, fam. Sit on that for a second. He went out and gave you 1.8 fantasy points a game. 18 yards a game. That's like, literally, I feel like 99% of wide receivers could have done the same, could have had the same production as James Washington last year. So we went and we looked at, all the wide receivers of the 465 wide receivers, um, all of them that had 18.1 yards per game or fewer or less in their rookie season. And guess what? Only three of them broke out in the following year. So you're looking at a 0.6% hit rate. So based on historical data, James Washington's chances of going over 800 receiving yards are at 0.6%. So in the, in the words of my good friend, Randy Jackson, that's going to be a no for me, dog, on James Washington. And I know the chances are probably higher. He's in a better situation, blah, blah, blah. But the numbers don't lie. 0.6% of wide receivers break out if they average 18.1 yards per game or fewer in the rookie season. Dynasty, sure. But I still think his value is at a minimum. Is that a year away from starting to actually increase to the point where they'll get good value from him. Last guy on this list I wanted to talk about was Vance McDonald. I like Vance a whole lot. Uh, my, my guy is a whole, the whole snack right here. Vance is a whole, whole snack. And I broke them down in depth in my tight end rankings video, along with, you know, I had the wide receiver rankings video. We did each position. I'll, I'll uh, link the tight ends ranking video up here as well as down below. Not many people realize this, but Vance McDonald 
finished as the tight end 10 last year in fantasy football, despite missing a game. So a legit tight end one last year. He caught 50 of 73 targets for 610 yards and a touchdown. 50 catches, 600 over 600 yards is good. The touchdown number obviously is not good, but um, those things fluctuate drastically. His problem has always been staying healthy. Uh, and he played in 15 games in 2018, which was a career high. He didn't miss a game. He just didn't play in week one for whatever reason. The Steelers didn't play him. So 15 games of healthy Vance McDonald. I will say he was extremely mediocre for times throughout the season. Um, he literally had one game, that week two game, where he had that crazy <laughs> stiff arm on Chris Conti, where he went four for 112 and a touchdown, counted for 18% of his fantasy points on the year. But listen, Vance McDonald, let me pull up his player profiler, is a very good athlete with good size. 6'4", 267, 91st percentile arm length, 86th percentile weight adjusted speed score, 94th percentile spark score. College dominator rating in the 80th percentile, breakout age in the 78th percentile. Y'all, Vance, Vance, if he could stay healthy and put it together this year, I think this is a big, big year for him. Antonio Brown, 169 targets, is gone. Like I said, some of them are going to go to Juju. Some of them are going to go to James Washington. But some of them are also going to go to Vance. He had 73 targets last year. If he gets 27 of those 169, which is what, 17 or 18%, I don't think that's outrageous. I think he could flirt with 90 to 110 targets in between that range, and he's going to be a top seven or eight fantasy tight end if he gets those looks. Jesse James is also a free agent, which would open up, and they, for some reason, they actually had a 50-50 snap split last year, which is absurd to me. But if um, if Jesse James resigns, then this is irrelevant, uh, and there, there's actually been reports saying that they do want to resign him, but we'll see. If Jesse James does not resign, then Vance McDonald is is literally his opportunity is right there for him to to break out as a as a fantasy tight end. So, those are kind of my impacts when it comes to the Antonio Brown trade. Uh, I, I hope I didn't leave anything out. I wanted to get this out to you guys quickly because I'm sure some of you guys are in Dynasty and you are fielding offers um, for Antonio Brown. So, if you did enjoy the video, again, hit that thumbs up, please. It helps YouTube give me, I don't know, give me more exposure, whatever, whatever, whatever. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new, because we're breaking down everything with the big facts, 2019 fantasy football. Make sure you check out bigdogsdraftguide.com because we got my season long draft kit on pre-order. You'll get for a discounted price if you order prior to March 25th. It's got everything in there. If you thought this thing was in depth, my friends, you are going to be blown away by the draft kit. I love y'all. Stay breezy. I don't know why the fuck I just said stay breezy. It's the corniest line ever, and I've never said that at the end of my one of my videos. But I do actually love you. Ah! 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 Ah!